P is for penguin playing the piano. P is for Paris, for police, for pony. P is for puppy. Hello, my name is Jim. Welcome to my booktube channel about books and reading and stuff. This will be a continuation of my alphabetic tags. Today it is the P tag. P is the 16th letter of the alphabet. P is for porridge. What did you have for breakfast? P is for painting. Do you have a favourite painter? I have a lot of books about art. I like painting. When I go to London or Paris, I visit the galleries. When I'm in London, I visit the National Gallery in Paris, the Louvre and Orsay. I think my favourite painters would be Turner, and Rembrandt, but perhaps my favourite would be Renoir. Pierre Auguste Renoir was great friends with Maupassant, and there's the story that Maupassant asked Renoir, why is everything you see in rows? Because Renoir always had this positive outlook and even when he was old and sick and decrepit, this wasn't reflected in his paintings. And Renoir responded to Maupassant saying, why do you see everything in noir or black? P is for police. P is for police procedural. Police procedural is a subgenre of crime and mystery. What was the last police procedural you read? The last one I read was In Dark Water by Lynn McEwan. This is a suspenseful police procedural set in Dumfries and Galloway in the south of Scotland, very close to the English border. Our protagonist is D.I. Shona Oliver, who doubles up as a lifeboat rescuer when she's not policing. Uh, I'm surprised this is Lynn McEwan's first novel, as she writes like a seasoned crime writer. The characters are interesting and well drawn, the plot is plausible, and the pacing builds from a slow beginning to a thrilling climb. P. P is for playlist. I have many playlists here on YouTube. I have a playlist for each of these alphabetic tags. If I see somebody has done the alphabetic tag, I add them to the playlist and I link to those playlists in the description below. Uh, my most popular playlists in terms of number of views are the music ones. I have one, the new music compilation, where I have over 2,000 views. This is just a lot of music that I like, that I just like to listen to on shuffle from time to time. In the past, I used to work in music retail. I used to have a lot of vinyl, cassettes, CDs. I used to go around watching many gigs. P is for Primal Scream. I saw Primal Scream 14 times in 1989. Uh, the playlist, if you want to have a look, will show you some of the music that I like. It's, it says new music, but it's not necessarily new. This Rolling Stones and Elvis are in there, along with 2021 artists. It's just a real mix. The other playlist that's got a lot is the Georgian Music Playlist, where I've just added lots of Georgian songs in the hopes that listening to Georgian music will help me to get a feel for the language. My wife, she started learning English by listening to the Beatles and writing down the lyrics. My success with Georgian hasn't been so great. P is for publisher. Do you have a favourite publisher? When I'm looking at books, when I'm reading books, I'm not really aware too much of the publisher. Way back in 1980, when I was into science fiction, I'd go to the local library and look for the yellow spines. The yellow would be an indication of gallants, and I liked their many science fiction authors. P is for pilgrimage. 
Have you ever made a pilgrimage, either to a religious place or maybe a literary place? I've been to Santiago de Compostela, but I haven't done the pilgrim route. I went by train. I thought when I was 50, I would do the road to Santiago, having read the pilgrimage by Paulo Coelho, but I never got around to it. Uh, the Hindus suggest that when you're 50, you should go on a pilgrimage, because by that time you should have got your material possessions in order, and you should do something about your spiritual life. I've also visited Jerusalem, but again, not on pilgrimage, just to see the city. It's one of the cities I felt I should see before I die, like Istanbul and Rome. P is for play. Do you have a favourite play? I think mine would be Pygmalion by George Bernard Shaw. I don't read a lot of plays. My favourite Shakespeare play, as this is Shake Tembo, would be Othello. Uh, I like the evil character of Iago. He is the most evil character I've read in fiction. Part of this evilness is because Othello trusts Iago so much and he betrays him. He is for paperback. Do you prefer paperback or do you prefer hardback? Personally, I prefer paperback because it's lighter, it's usually cheaper, it's easier to carry around. Obviously with hardback, they last longer and they have nice covers and the printing is usually bigger, but I prefer a paperback. P is for Paris. What was the last book you read set in Paris? It's another of my geographical settings prompts. I'm a geographical nerd. Uh, to my embarrassment, probably the last book I read set in Paris was The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown, which I read a few years ago. And it's not something you should really admit to on booktube. Dan Brown, Da Vinci Code is really like the McDonald's of reading. It's satisfies a craving but it's not great literature here's my globe again lots of countries begin with p we have peru paraguay we have portugal hello christina poland we have the philippines we have papua new guinea have you read any books set in any of these countries begin with p I actually read a lot of books set in Poland. I've read a lot of books set in Auschwitz. One of the most memorable books I read about Auschwitz was And the Violin Stopped Playing, A Story of the Gypsy Holocaust by Alexander Romati. Uh, when the, many of the inmates of Auschwitz were led to the gas chambers, they had this gypsy orchestra playing. And eventually the gypsies were themselves exterminated. There's not a lot about the Gypsy Holocaust, about what happened to the Roma and Sinto people. The Jews who survived the Holocaust, many of them wrote about it, they were very literate, very literate and they wanted people to know this story. The Gypsies who survived the Holocaust, many of them were illiterate and many of them just wanted people to forget about the stories and there's still a lot of prejudice against gypsy people today in many countries. Uh, I visited Auschwitz in 2007. It's a very sad place. What struck me was the sheer scale of it. It was a very large complex, particularly the Birkenau too. And the guides, they didn't take us to Block 13, which is where a lot of the Roma and Sinto were kept. Even today in Poland, there's a lot of prejudice against the gypsies. The guides were telling us all about the, what happened to the Jews and what happened to the Polish resistance who were interned in Auschwitz, but told us almost nothing about the gypsies. P is for pandemic. Have you read anything about pandemics? I read the 
Poisonous Pixies second book of poetry, the lockdown edition, lots of peas in there. This was interesting, it talked a lot about how the pandemic and the lockdown was affecting London. And I also read Station Eleven by Emily St. John Randell. This was about a pandemic the, called the Georgia flu, and I live in Georgia. It was supposedly started in Georgia and it wiped out 99% of the population. And Station Eleven is about this traveling group who go around putting on plays and concerts for the survivors of this pandemic. Who do I tag? Off a P, I'll tag four of my favourite booktubers. Paula at Draw Your Book, Margaret Pinard, Juan at Plagued by Visions, and Erica at Passage of Time. These are all great booktubers, I'll link to them in the show notes below, and I suggest you take a look. If you like this video, you can like and subscribe below and I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye.